So here we are. This is session three. This is Kim, Kim Claver. I'm delighted that all of you are here. There are quite a group of you. And this is the third of a series. I might do a fourth. I'm not 100% sure, but maybe because I'm thinking of something new that we've been doing and I thought I might show it to you in a fourth episode. But number three is what is the formula that you can use so that you sound like a normal person when you're marketing? I mean, the bottom line to all of the marketing issues that most people have in any kind of marketing, doesn't matter what you're selling, if you're, it's an affiliate program or a network marketer, people tend to focus on what they've got and the features of what they've got and their company and themselves and why somebody else has to have it and wants to have it. And so this creates a big problem because other people, they don't really care what we've got. If it isn't relevant to them right now, they're out of here. And so the whole approach that one needs to figure out is if you've got something that you think has helped you, you have a really important to you before and after, and you think, oh man, I think the world might like this, uh, then we've got something we can talk about. And there's something that I can help you with, which is to get the word out about that thing and that solution to other people. So number one is you wanna be sure that you have something, whether it's an income change, or whether it's a before and after from your product. You can have two before and afters. One is, before this product, I was big as a house my whole life. After this product, six weeks, eight weeks, I'm no longer big as a house. Okay, so that makes sense? And that's a before and after. You could have a before and after for income. You know, you could say, well, before this, I lived in a hovel or I lived in my car, and now I'm living in my parents' garage and I can even pay rent. Or you know, I'm living in my own room or my own studio or my own apartment. Often, I mean, I'll just tell you this, often the smaller the changes that you say you've achieved, the more believable it is. Sometimes people get so tired of, oh, I used to live on the street like a bum, and now I have my Lamborghini. In fact, I have four Lamborghinis. Come look in my garage. And people go, yeah, 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 right. And it's not credible to most people, even if it were true. So sometimes it's really better to downplay what your before and after is, make it a little more time or make the money a little bit less than what is normal, just because it makes it, if you're not believed, what does it matter if you're telling the truth? You see what I mean? All right, so the problem, let's get the show on the road. Why is it so difficult to get people to buy or join our network marketing companies? Remember, for those of you that are tuning in, this is session three. I'm gonna review the first two for those of you that have been here, you remember where we were. And those that are new, you'll know where we were. So this is the number one question on my mind. Why is it so difficult to get people to buy or join really any of our network marketing companies? Okay. And the situation that many people have is they have no new customers. They have no new reps. And their current strategy is um, hoping and praying for a yes. And this can be people that have achieved quite a bit. There are people who have achieved the top ranks in their company and suddenly they plateaued or they went backwards or they lost half their people. And so, yeah, they have the rank of, you know, super hoo-ha, but they're being paid at the rank of somebody who's living in the car. So achieving a rank doesn't mean you're going to keep it. Achieving a high level of income for a month or two doesn't mean that you keep it. So many times people grow big in the beginning, then it plateaus and, or it goes backwards. And they're in that situation right now as well, whether their rank is, like I said, super hoo-ha or a little mini rank just getting started. The strategy is hoping and praying for a yes. And this is not what you want to do, obviously. So if you didn't reach the goal, let's say you had a goal, I want 100 customers in 100 days. Or you say, mm, I want a goal of 10 customers in the next month. And let's say for what Every reason, doesn't matter what it is, you did not achieve it, okay? So we didn't reach the goal. Here is the question you must ask if you ever expect to achieve anything in your life. You didn't reach the goal, doesn't matter what it is, by the way. <laughs> this is just one. What are we going to do differently, okay? So the answer is not, oh, crap, we should quit. No, that's what sissies do. If you didn't reach the goal, the question they ask at Google and at Apple and at Netflix and at Amazon is, okay, we want the goal. What are we gonna do differently? That's the key. So write that down and put that on your calendar in front of your face all the time. So you didn't reach the goal, so what else is new? You think other people don't reach their goal? 
the question is, what are we going to do differently? What are we going to do differently? What are we going to do differently? That's the key. Okay. So now we're going to do something different. I'll tell you. One of them is niche. And by itself, this isn't quite enough, but it's a start. This is what I showed you last week. So we have the situation, no new customers or no new reps right now, or not enough. We're hoping and praying for, yes, this is the old situation. Okay. Now I'm suggesting you figure out your niche. You should meet your niche. I'm going to show you this in just a second. And when you figure out your niche and you know how to meet them and greet them and call them, you will be able to create a customer generation machine, which will allow you to get to yes pretty much whenever you want. Okay. So what is your niche? Well, a niche is comprised of people that have a certain problem or a certain desire that you can help with. Okay, so that's a niche. Is that clear to everybody? Okay, good. So a niche, people with a problem, just want to be sure that you get this, people with a problem or a desire that you can help with. Okay, this is not everyone. Everybody, the world is comprised of niches and markets and people that have different desires, different problems. There are as many problems and desires as there are belly buttons. So there, you know, don't assume that everyone wants what you have. They do not, as you've all discovered. Okay. So niche, people with a problem or desire that you can help with. I'm going to give you a quiz at the end. Okay. I expect you to pass. People like Tim, especially. <laughs> all right. So here's the story. If you don't have a lot of new customers, you probably have been chasing people. Many people tell me I feel like a people chaser, which is why this is here. So nobody wants to be chased. And I know that we don't enjoy chasing people either. Follow up is usually AKA people chasing and we don't want this. We don't want to do it and we don't want to be at the other end of it either. So what we're going to do now is become a problem solver to whom to your niche, to the people that are in your niche. And this means that you, are going to become a customer generation machine. You will be able to create one of those that you do manually or you do with the machine like we've got. Henry Ford said, man without the machine is a slave. Man with a machine is not a slave. And that is exactly right for recruiting as well, for recruiting and customer gathering. Because you think what you do, you have to talk to 100 people, each one. And you, what, spend 10, 15, 20 minutes with each one? We can, if you had a customer generation machine that talks to those people where you spend exactly zero time and of those hundred, you get three people back who say, yes, I want this. I'm all qualified. I'm ready to sign up. I have the money. Where do I sign? Wouldn't you rather do that than spend a day with a hundred people or two days talking to, you know, what, 10, 15, 20 minutes each trying to sell every single one of them, most of whom are not even interested in the first place. So that's what you can do if you know your niche. Okay. So would you rather be a people chaser or a problem solver? This is, I believe, where we ended last time. Just decide. And would you rather have people talk about you? Oh, there comes that person doing one of those things. She chases everybody. Or as a problem solver, which is what dentists and doctors and teachers, people who have something they've really learned how to do, they can solve problems. And people like those people, just nobody likes chasers, ambulance chasers, people chasers, right? So think about yourself as a problem solver. So now how do you do this? How do you become a problem solver instead of a people chaser? And I'm going to show you how to do that right here, right now. So this is what we're going to do differently. Remember we said we're screwing up on the goal. We don't have anybody. Everybody we do get wants to the refund. They want money back. They send the product back because we said, well, why don't you do us a favor? Would you do us a favor? Because everybody's going to want this. Aunt Lulu wants you to do me a favor. And so she does you a favor and she doesn't want to spend a hundred bucks a month. And she cancels her auto subscription and says, you know, I really don't like it that much. So let me send it back. I'm so sorry. And there you sit because you were chasing people. So what we're going to do differently to change from having no new customers and no new reps is we're going to go from being people chasers, that's history, to being a problem solver. Does this, is this clear for folks? You see how this works? Tell me yes. Just want to make sure that we got this. So a real business offers 
value. That means they fix somebody's problem, okay? Or give them their desire. That's what they do. Every business, if it's any good, if it's in business, it solves a problem. If you think that you have a business with your network marketing company or your affiliate program or your consulting program, that means that you're supposed to be solving some kind of problem for somebody. Otherwise, you have no business because people only pay money to feel better, which comes from having a problem solved, right? Or meeting some desire that they have, not that we have, but that they have, okay? And then we pay. We all pay to have our problem solved all day long, whether it's a stick of bubble gum, whether it's, I don't know, going to the movies, doesn't make any difference what it is. That's what a business does. A business offers value, which means make somebody's life somehow better. They solve a problem or they give us some desire. And we pay to have these problems solved. That's what the business world is all about. So if we go to a coffee cafe, for example. I live in the Venice Beach area now. I live, in fact, literally on the beach. I just moved down here, what, a month or so ago. I've been thinking about this for so long. And I look out the window, and there's nothing but beach and white sands here because I found a really special place. And there are cafes around here. And so there's a cafe. What is its purpose? Just walked over to one this morning. A quick, fun energy boost, right? No matter where you get the cafe, you go into a coffee cafe, you get a quick, fun boost of some kind of energy. The people, the sitting, the watching, the croissants, whatever you're having. And guess what? You don't walk out without paying. No, we pay. Five bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, whatever it is. So the business is the coffee cafe. It's a person, it's a group that solves a certain problem. People who'd like to have something quick, that's quick, energy, fun, other people, maybe take a walk down there. That's the fix they get, the problem they're solving, right? Or the desire that they're giving to the person. And then they get paid. And hopefully they get paid more than they their expenses, including the rent and the people that they, does this make sense to everybody? Yes, just want to make sure you got it. Yeah. Next, we pay them. Now, what problem do you solve and for whom do you solve it? That's the key. Okay. You got to get out your pad and figure out what problem do you solve and for whom do you solve it? Okay. This is the question you ask yourself. And if you ask, if you go to say your company events and meetings, they'll tell you everybody wants what you have. I'm sure you've heard that. Everyone wants health and wealth, blah, blah, blah. However, I'm sure that your personal experience for each of you that's on this call has told you something different. Everyone does not want, everyone does not desire, and everybody does not want to join. You have to figure out what is the problem with whatever you're marketing, right? It doesn't matter what it is. It could be an eating program to give people their health back and their body back and lose some weight and do some cleansing, face care, energy products, hair care. It doesn't matter what it is. There is some problem that this solves and that you in particular can solve better than other people with your product line. Okay. You got this? Now, what is the problem you can solve? And for whom can you solve it? Okay. By what means are you going to solve it? What problem can you solve? For whom do you solve it? Remember, all kinds of people have all kinds of problems. You might say, well, I have a weight loss, so I can solve the problem of weight loss. For whom? For everyone. Okay. Well, right away, this is not properly formulated. Uh, because if you look at weight loss on, if you Google weight loss, I believe there are like 80 or 100 million results. So weight loss is not enough. It's too general. So you need to have something that's a little bit more narrow because the world, everybody's just about, that's out there is overweight, except down here in California, Southern California. They're not overweight, I'll tell you that. Everybody looks really good here, which is a really good reason to live here. What problem can you solve? So weight loss is by itself too big. So you might say, well, weight loss for people for men over 40, and even that is very broad. So maybe men over 40 who were injured in the past. 
and are having having to figure out how to get their exercise routine back. Now there you're talking about the problem for say men over 40 who had an injury and are trying to get their exercise program back and get their abs back, let's pretend, right? And by what means? Well, by an alternative eating program. So now you see you can you have these this group and you have these people that are possible for you to help once you call their name. Right? That's what we're going to be doing is calling people's names here. So this is your fill in the blank. You need to figure this out and be really specific. The more general you are, like I help depressed people. Well, that's okay. That's a start, but it's too broad. So how about moms with three kids who are depressed because they're pregnant again, and they have no time for a business of their own? Say, I mean, I'm just inventing this. You need to get your the problem that you solve and for whom it is down several layers. Let me give you the example that I often give that I've used to kind of make sure that I have enough layers, right? So for example, when you go shopping for shoes at Nordstrom's, if you look at Nordstrom, it's a, a good shoe store. They sell a lot of cool shoes, all the brands, all the designer brands, whatnot. And if you walk in there, they have men's and women's shoes, about usually 5,000 pairs, okay? So if you stand there looking at all the shoes and say you're a woman, somebody's going to come and say, can I help you? And you're going to say, yep. And they're going to probably say something like, if you're a woman and you look like you might be a mom, like you have kids or something, who are you shopping for? Yourself, your kids, or your husband? So what are they saying? I'm trying to solve your problem, mademoiselle, and I need to know for whom you are buying shoes, the middle one, see that? So she says, well, for me. Okay, so now the next one for whom is going to be, okay, so for you, and then they're going to say, for what? Or words to that effect. What does that mean? Well, she says, women's, that's the first, that's the first cut there, see, women. Next, for what? What are you going to do with them? Well, I, tennis, I'm going to do tennis. So I want women's tennis shoes, right? So we're slicing and dicing right here. What's the problem? And he choose for whom women for what tennis what kind well nike right what size eight what color white anything else yeah narrow great so out of these five thousand pairs of shoes they bring her four or five pair that meet those specifications you see how that works and that way, when you can call out who you can help as clearly as you can call out the shoe type that you want when you're standing in front of a shoe store that has 5,000 pairs of good quality shoes for men and women and children, uh, this is what we're doing. We're just reversing everything. See, instead of going the way they like to teach in the business, I've been in it 30 years, I've experienced everything I'm telling you that everybody's going to want this. That's like going to the shoe store and trying on all the shoes in the store. If you're a woman looking for tennis shoes, size eight, white, Nike, all that, you're, they're going to make you try on the children's shoes, the men's shoes, and then the women's shoes, evening shoes, slippers, high heels, boots, everything, tongs. Why would you do that? This is what we're doing with the people, do you see? So this is why we have so many situations where people have no customers and no recruits and they're called people chasers yeah you know? oh it's one of those people doing one of those things don't listen to them because they're just going to try to get you to sign up and then get all your family to sign up and blah 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 right so uh, is this clear this is working right we we have this clear with folks all right so let's go on to the next one now i'm going to give you a formula that we use we have two formulas one is from the orange book i think you guys have that uh, and one is an updated version of the same one. You can use either one, but I'm going to give you, I'll give you, well, I can give you both. I help. Those are your opening words. Okay. Now I'm giving you one of my many niches. I help niche network marketers. Notice I don't say I help network marketers. No. They're like, what, 80 million network marketers, according to the DSA, I think. 80 or 90 million in the world. That's a lot of network marketers. So I said, I help 
network marketers who don't know what to say. See? So I've got my two layers in there. Network marketers who don't know what to say. And I could also add if I wanted to, I won't because this is this has worked very well, but I could say network marketers who don't know what to say to their family or friends when they've signed up for another deal and they're still not talking to them for the deal they did the last time. I certainly could do that in a New York second. I could show you that, what to say there. So just network marketers who don't know what to say, okay? Now, what's the means? How am I gonna do this? Because there are ways to do this, you know. And I'm saying with scripts based on your before and after experience. Does this make sense? Okay, so I help network marketers who blah, 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 in my case, don't know what to say, how, with scripts based on their before and after experience. Actually, that should say with script formulas, okay? Now, the Orange Book, some of you have that. If my product's so great, how come I can't sell it? The Orange Book has this very similar structure. It says, I market product, a program or products for people who are network marketers, who don't know what to say, using scripts or script formulas based on their before and after experience. You see this? So this is parallel, exactly. Just like we have it here. So I help these people with this issue by this means. And there are many means to solve a problem, right? So if you're in the weight loss, you could say I help whatever the weight loss people are who have these issues and what are the means? Well, it might be a water fast. It might be a juice fast. It might be with a week at a fat farm, a classy one, like say, mm, I never was fat, but you know, I went to the golden door for like six or seven years in a row. Wonderful place, meet wonderful people as well, but it's the place and the way they do it. That was, you know, some years ago, but I'm thinking I could go, not because I'm fat, but just because I like the experience, okay? So you can do appetite suppressants, you can do a water diet, you can do a juice fast, you can do, there are probably 500 ways to lose weight. And the, the options, don't think of them as better than yours or worse than yours. The word is different. And the difference comes from what people want. And that depends on their experience. You know, if you've never been exposed to an alternative type of eating program or a raw food program, and you come from someplace where everything is cooked and deep fried, when you hear raw food, you're probably going to have nightmares. Nightmares, really. You might have a nightmare. Oh, my God, I'm going to eat a raw fish. He's going to come right up, and I'm just going to, oh, right? So it's different. The means to how you solve this problem is different depending on what you know, what you've experienced, which is based on what you've been exposed to, where you live, your family, what you read, who you hang with. And that all changes as life goes on. You know, we get better and better. So be aware that it's not better or worse. I am not better or worse than somebody else. I'm different. I'm not better than Eric or worse than Eric, my old friend. I'm different than him. That's it. Or anybody else. We're all a little bit different, right? So people relate to what they relate to, and it changes over time. You want to get your group, and you can make yourself an incredible fortune with hundreds and hundreds of people. Remember, there are like 3 billion people on Facebook. You need four or 500, and you're doing pretty well. And of those customers, if you got all customers, you know probably three or four out of, I don't know, maybe out of 25, you'd get three or four people who say, I want to sell this. That's what I did. Every company I went into, I went in to sell the product thinking, oh, yeah, I'm going to accept the fourth and fifth one. I knew I wanted to sell the product. But I also knew I could build this thing because I had done it now, you know, build it to the top really fast. And I, I like going fast. I like building big. So, okay, I help these people who blah, blah, and who blah, blah, and who blah, blah. Remember the conditions like the shoes, right? Women's, tennis, Nike, size eight, white narrow all the way down get five conditions by this means with this particular thing okay and this by the way would not be the name of your program or your product so i noticed my answer is not here with the orange book all right if my products are great how come i can't sell it no the answer is the description of it 
scripts with script formulas based on your before and after experience. All right, next up. I think you got this. Now, then what? We're almost there. Hey, Elise, how you doing, girl? All right, let me know if there's any issue technically, huh? You jump in and help me. All right, so then what? Now what are we going to do? Number one, you use this to answer the question, what do you do? So somebody says, so what do you do? Well, let's see if we could do this here. I help network marketers who don't know what to say with scripts, script formulas based on their before and after experience. Now, if you were talking to somebody who didn't know anything about anything, you know, I might say, I help people who have stuff to sell and they don't know how to sell it. And I show them the words to use so they don't feel stupid when they're trying to sell it to people that they're trying to sell it to. See? That's how I would say these words to somebody that has no clue what a network marketer is and has no idea about any of it, right? If you were at a, owned a Range Rover dealership, you might say, I help people who are in the high-end luxury car market choose their ideal luxury car with a drive in one of our super duper Range Rovers. What's the means? I'm giving you a drive. I let you take the car home for the weekend and you love it so much you can't stand it. Right? All right. So there are all these different, this is what you want to do here. So what do I, what do you do? I help these people do that. And usually like what happened to me, if you use the orange book, you'd say, so what do you do? Well, you know, I market this product or program for people who are trying to sell stuff and they don't know what to say. And I show them how to do it using their own experience with the product that they're trying to market. So they sound like a normal person. And then I say, and what do you do? That's what I do. What do you do? Always, what do you do? This is in conversations. I had a conversation today with a guy who was telling me I really love live belly to belly and I have a program I'm going to show you a little bit of it in a few minutes here called the ESS. And it's primarily a an online Facebook, how to market on Facebook. Those 3 billion people, you ought to have a few hundred of them. And we show you how to get them without losing friends and family. In fact, you don't even need to approach anybody, you know. But the thing is, he was saying he really likes doing stuff belly to belly. And I thought, you know, I'm going to add a module there of how to do your warm market and how to do live events. If you are somebody who likes doing live events, I love doing live events. I think we're going to add a step in there to show you how to do that and use Facebook mm -hmm. to drive the audience to your live event, you know? So that's what's I'm just letting you in on a little secret. Okay. So is this, I help network marketers who don't know what to say with scripts based on their before and after experience. Are you all able to fill this in? Let me see. Are you guys writing this stuff down? I'm going to be checking. Okay, you should have it here. Number two, you put this on your Facebook profile. A lot of you want to use Facebook. And you go, oh, yeah, I want to use Facebook. Really? Yeah. But uh, what do I put on my Facebook page? And so you end up splattering your company, the pictures, the contests that the company has, the sales the company has, and you wonder why nobody comes. Well, they weren't really interested. You know what I mean? And you didn't ask them if they cared and they wouldn't know. I mean, how would you know what they care about? And then they stop friending you and pretty soon you don't get any responses. So if you see yourself as a, if you're a people chaser, that's what you'll do. You, you, your, your page will look, your profile will look like a company billboard. And if you want to stop that so you can be perceived as a problem solver, remember, like an eye doctor or cardiac surgeon, someone who solves the problem for certain people. That's what you want to look like. That's what I want to look like. <laughs> you know, you may want to be a billboard for your company, but it won't sell because nobody comes to Facebook to be sold. That's the problem. They come to be entertained and engaged. And so you, the reason Facebook makes so much money, I think, was it 70 billion last quarter? Do you know how they make their money? Ads. People clicking on ads, and most of them make, well, not most, but uh, the ones who know how to advertise earn more from the products and programs they sell 
than the money they spend on the ads. That's why people keep advertising. If they spend a buck on ads, they might get $2 out. So they just say, well, how much money can I throw at Facebook? Can I throw a million and then I get 2 million? Well, yeah, if you know how to do it. So Facebook is making a lot of money on people who advertise, but the people who advertise do what I just described to you. They are problem solvers. They call out, we're looking for these people, right? Like I, when I have run ads before, you'll see I, I run very few ads, but when I do, they're exactly almost what I put in my profile, my Facebook profile. If you're thinking about getting a program to help you build your network marketing business, read this. What have I just done? Called out the audience, right? So that's your problem if that's you. So I help people, yada, 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 just like we did before. So let me show you how to put this on your Facebook profile. The statement, this little one that we just made here, okay? All right, this is my page as of what, a couple hours ago? You see the red arrow there and on the left top? And it says, um, I help network marketers become problem solvers instead of people chasers, okay? I change this around probably every couple of weeks as I refine it and test it to see what it is that will get me not necessarily a large response, but the response of the people who are ready to buy. And my programs are the ones that I'm promoting for online dominance in your area are high ticket. They're not cheap dates. There's, there's not $27, you know, but you don't have to do them. You can get the little ones to start or don't buy the stuff at all. But for the number of people that I have, it's a very small number and very high percentages are buyers. And that is what I want. One of the things you really have to learn is that you want quality over quantity. 50 yeses, if nobody ever buys, will not pay your rent or your mortgage. 50 likes, if nobody buys, doesn't do anything. It just doesn't. It feels good, but it doesn't put, you know, like they say sometimes, food on the table. All right, so you see, you could make your statement, I help network marketers, right? And I could, have, I could also say, I help network marketers who don't know what to say, come up with scripts based on their before and afters, right? I can say that too. Also on your Facebook page, one of the things we teach in the program, in the ESS program, is what to put on your page so that people who have the problem that you can solve go, oh my gosh, this is a place I'm going to hang out. She is into network marketing and how come everybody says no she's really into that I want to see and it looks like here she's got a picture with a group of people there on the left so maybe she actually built something and she knows what she's talking about so I'm going to come to this page and then they come friend me or they follow me right now I'm at 5,000 friends so now people can just follow and every week or so I dump so-called friends that aren't very active and whatnot so that people that are in my classes I can friend them you know but then a person is going to come here and watch my daily posts. And this is what you want. It's called having a following because it shows on this page that I'm really into this issue and these people that have this problem called the niche, right? Does this make sense? Are we just looking? Okay, good. So this is what you do if you want people to come to you, okay? These are the things that you do. And if you are interested in learning how to do this, in the next six weeks. So you can really dominate for your niche, which is really what you want. I mean, why not dominate instead of being a little weenie player, hit it big, you know, cause you've got stuff that you can do. So I have a, a webinar, you just go to maxout.com, M-A-X-O-U-T.com forward slash meet Lulu, M-E-E-T-L-U-L-U and that shows you kind of an overview of the ESS program so you can see what it is and see whether or not it's something that would help you if you want to play big instead of playing tiny. It's not a cheap date, sorry to say. Uh, Harvard's not cheap either. And it's just if you want to dominate in your niche and you want the results that that gives you, which is recognition, referrals, and really an endless stream of customers and even maybe some reps, it's, it takes a while. You, the person that you are today is not going to be the one to achieve that or you would have already done it, see? And I, I wish I could just give you a pill. We're working on it so that you can become that person. 
but I can jam it into six weeks and nine weeks for the main program so that you can learn it, do it, 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 and see results from not only us, but from your market, from your own audience. You can do this live, you know, and in such a way that nobody you know even knows you're doing it. So you don't have to irritate anybody or get questions from like, what are you doing now? Okay, so it's not a cheap date. Well, let me just tell you what I had here. There are two YesS programs, the main program, which is the nine week program and the mini. And the mini is part of the main, okay? Part of the main program. And the YesS main program is USD 5880. The YesS mini is 1697 or it might be 1677, I can't remember. And there are payments available for both of these programs. The main program, the big difference with that is that the whole process of qualifying people asking all those questions is automated and all the leads are automated all of their values are in your back office that is how much they want to spend how much they've spent before what the real reason is that they want to make these changes and you want this so you can market to those folks better in the future but also help the ones that you've got so you have a, a really super duper uh, back office plus we teach you a sales conversion script that i have used for i don't know 30 years where you basically interview and diagnose people, which is what I've done for many years. And that allows me to get eight out of 10 yeses. People always say, how do you get eight out of 10 yeses? Well, because by the time I talk to them, I've done all the qualification already, you see? And so we automate all of this so that the only people who show up are the ones who have the values, have the money, and they're ready to get started. That's what we do. The mini gets you all that information it's just that it's not automated it's what we did years ago before we could automate stuff online okay but you learn the basics the same if you want to watch the webinar there's a webinar and at the end of that webinar it's about 43 minutes you will see the options to each program you can choose whichever one you want okay and if somebody is ready to order right now sometimes people are just ask me for the order link in the comments and I will give it to you okay the main program includes how to market how to do the whole thing on Facebook with your scripting for the answers to questions that you do because we teach you like for example how to do polls and if you ask p interesting poll questions you draw out all the people who have an interest in that without them knowing whether you sell anything or not and that's what you want you need to see who's interested first you know if you're going to start a baseball team you first go around and say okay Who's got kids that like to play baseball? We're thinking maybe we'll start a team. Who's hot for baseball? You find out first what the neighborhood kids, who, who, which ones are they? Or if you're starting, I don't know, a ballet class, you ask all the parents or you ask all the people in the schools, who are the kids who like ballet? Who likes dancing? Who likes modern dance or ballet? Who, who are the dancers? And you find them first. And then once they say, yeah, I'm interested in dancing, I've been dancing since I'm three and now I'm nine and you know we, we want to be part of a program. This is how you call people by name. So you want to do exactly the same thing. So in the Yes Main, it's all the automation and we have a, a significant sales process that we teach in the main that we do not teach in the mini just because the main is the main program and they are psychologically developed questions that are designed to stir up the reasons people came to you in the first place to see whether or not it's they really want to make a change and this is very heavy duty stuff which is why we reserve it for the people who are in the main program because you you really shouldn't misuse it the mini will get you to your 100 or 200 customers using facebook using the methodologies that i've kind of outlined here if you want a little bit more just go to that webinar right there and watch it and if you are interested in a, an order link for one of these programs, just ask me for it in the comments and I'll give it to you. And other than that, I think we are set. I think we'll do a be continued. What I'm thinking about, you can tell me if you'd be interested in this. One of the things we think about is people say, well, what should I post about? And they use people normally pitch, they, they post and pitch whatever they've got, the program, the product, the challenge, whatever it is. And we have found that posting the problem where what you pitch, what are you pitching? What's the offer you're making is about the problem 
or the desire that somebody has. And if you'd like to know how to do that, I will think about doing the next session, if we do a next session, on how to pitch a problem. Because when you do that right, you get nothing but the people who have the problem. And then it's just a question of degree. Who's got the problem badly enough that they want to do that? Okay. If you do the mini, yes, Christopher, if you do the mini and you upgrade, which a number of people have done, you get full credit for what you have paid for the, for the mini. So if you do the mini and then you're in three or four weeks and you go, oh my God, this is so fine. I got to have the maxi, you know, the main, we credit you your payments for the mini totally. We've had quite a number of people do that. So you can totally do that. Yeah. All right. Thanks, you guys. I'm glad it was good. Yes, totally good. You can't hear it enough because everything we hear is the opposite of what we really ought to be doing to help our clientele. So it's it's hard to go against the grain. But since the grain isn't working, may as well try something different, right? That's my mantra. Is what you're doing working now? No. How long have you been doing it? Three years? Yeah. It's not working. No. Do you want to do it? No. Does it make you feel good? No. Makes you feel unhappy? Yes. Then it's time to do something different. Remember the mantra at Google? We didn't reach our goal. It didn't happen. What's the answer? Who knows? Who can type it in? Who's going to be first to type this in? What is the answer? You didn't hit the goal. Now what? We're going to quit or we're going to ask a question? What's the question? Here is the question you must ask if you ever expect to achieve anything in your life. You didn't reach the goal, doesn't matter what it is, by the way. <laughs> this is just one. What are we going to do differently? Remember? We didn't hit it this time. We didn't do it this time. Didn't make it work this time. What are we going to do differently? That's the question you want to ask yourself. Okay? All right. I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.